<laughs> We're live! What's up, Z Pack? It's your boy Z Dog MD and Tom Heineber. Yo, yo, I'm here too. And we're doing a thing called <laughs> <laughs> Morning Rounds with Tom and Z. Why would Tom be on rounds? He's a muggle because mm -hmm. I said so. Yeah. I'm the authority figure. I think of myself like that dude. F. Scott Fitzgerald, who wrote The Great Gatsby. Oh, that dude. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was like a fly on the wall for the Roaring Twenties, you know? And I'm like a fly on the wall for all the fucked up shit that goes down in medicine. <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> profoundly disturbed by the comparison to F. Scott Fitzgerald on every level. But I will say there's a couple- Well, we're both alcoholics, Z. That's- That's that, where I got the comparison. That may be true. Uh, <laughs> let me do a little housekeeping for the Z Pack. A little <laughs> announcement. We're live, actually. We're broadcasting this live, but this is also a podcast on iTunes and Spotify now, which apparently people listen to. People keep messaging me to put it on Spotify, and I'm like, that's dumb. I do Apple Music, and the Spotify people get real judgy. They get They're judgy. Like, oh, Apple Music, do you like being inferior? And it's yeah. like, mm, uh -huh. it's yeah. easier for You're me. You're like, our, our leader died of uh, a rare neuroendocrine pancreatic tumor, okay? That's right. What's up with Spotify's leader? Still alive. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not even a comparison in awesomeness. Uh, so they're, they're on those podcast platforms. We're also on YouTube. We're also on ZDogMD.com. Here is a piece of news, though. So supporters of the show on Facebook, four ninety nine dollars a month, um, get to watch you and me last night live <laughs> doing some really dumb stuff. Like, I mean, stuff that, like, is career-ending, and yet we don't care because mm. it's supporters, and we love them, and they love us. And you cannot offend them. You cannot offend them. There is no call-out culture among the supporters. But... The reason I'm talking about supporters now is that we are officially now announcing that we've signed a deal to provide continuing education credits to the following people that are supporters. Doctors, and that includes MDs and DOs, nurse practitioners, PAs, and any type of nurse. So, you know, RN, LVN, LPN, WPN, GRN, I don't know what. <laughs> APRN. APRN. Um, so all those groups get, uh, we, we, we're going to do two to three CME-enabled episodes for supporters every month. And in fact, we might even show them to the broader group. But if you're a supporter, you get a special code that you can then log into Physician Weekly's website and take a quick post-test of three questions. That'll be easy. And you get your credit. So think about this. Three, up to three hours of continuing education credit per month for $4.99 a month. You can su fulfill all your requirements for the year in like half the year for 60 bucks a year. And you can use your hospital money and your CME money to actually pay for it. So I'm hoping to get a big tribe there that is, first of all, immune to being butthurt. So because on the main page, like I say stuff and people are like, I can't believe that you reposted R. Kelly's parody song that you did when R. Kelly is a rapist. And I'm like, what does his being a rapist have to do with my hard work and awesomeness in that parody? Like, why do I, okay, just like on Office Space, right, Tom? Like, oh, Michael Bolton, why don't you change your name to Mike Bolton? Why should I change? He's the one who fucking sucks, <laughs> right? So we're trying to grow the supporter tribe. I hope you become a part of it. That's my announcement. The dope thing is that it's now tax deductible. Hell to the yeah, because yeah. it's CME. Mm -hmm. So you can deduct it if you're a self-employed motherfucker. If you're not, then uh, get your hospital's CME money and use it. You can't deduct if it's like a workplace related expense. So workplace related expenses. Can you deduct time. scrubs? Do you deduct oh, I'm glad scrubs? we're talking accounting now. <laughs> if you're employed, those workplace related job related expenses have to reach a floor of 2%, I think of your total adjusted gross income before you can write them off. Ah. And you have to itemize and do all that. So it gets good. I would talk to your accountant, Tom. Heinberg. <laughs> <laughs> your tax professional. Your tax professional will help you with this. Uh, so other things I want to talk about today with Tommy T-Bones, we talk a lot about flu vaccination mm -hmm. and all the vaxxers, all the other kids with the anti-vaccine shit. I don't have anything else That's, for that. Yeah, you got to work on that one. Sneaker. Who are those guys? The, the Foster the People. Foster the People. Fos they had one song. It Which, was that yeah. song. That's right. Yeah. They changed their name to Foster the Freeze, and mm -hmm. they actually got a lot more listens because people thought about those fries, though. <laughs> um, so... The flu, you know, the anti-vaxxers are always saying, oh, it's, it doesn't prevent flu, it's the flu uh, shot, et cetera. Well, it turns out this year the match is superb. So the CDC and others are saying, hey, this year this shit may actually really work well. 
as so, opposed to working kind of. Because I got it this year. Yep. So we I'm both good. got it. I'm basically immortal, y'all. Yep. Can live forever now. You're like Henrietta Lacks's cancer cells. They're immortal. Forever. That's right. That's right. I made an obscure reference. It's no, I, I saw the movie with Oprah. Oprah was in that movie? Well, you don't know Was she this. Henrietta? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> you didn't say it. it was an HBO movie. Of course it was. Yeah. I don't have any cable. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's not that obscure, Z. Not when Oprah's doing it. You know, you know what? what I'm saying? Oprah just took it to the next level. <laughs> she took Henrietta Lacks and her immortal cells mm-hmm. and immortalized them. That's right. So it's two stages of immortality. There's not just straight immortality. There's You know, it's like nested infinities that Neil deGrasse Tyson, who apparently got me too'd. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He invited a girl over for wine and cheese, and she was like, mm-mm. Well, did, did you hear the exact, like, details of it? It was amazing. I read his version of it, yeah. Oh, you read his version. His so version. I, I think I read her version, and it was something like, she shows up, wine and cheese, he goes into the kitchen, comes out in a wife beater. <laughs> He's just like, I just like to get a little bit more comfortable right He's like, now. well, I'm at home. This is what Neil at home looks like. I, I mean, Neil- hey, you're in my home. I'm just, I'm just going to take off my pants now. <laughs> Dudes have dudes have weird logic for their creepy behavior. They like, really do. Yeah, you have to when you're a dude, you're creepy. That's just how it is. We're mm-hmm. all creepy, mm-hmm. and so you like have T Rex arms. Yeah, creepy. You yeah. have to justify it somehow, and so you're like, well, when people come in my house, I take off my pants. That's what I my do. My house, my rules. <laughs> I also know a lot about the cosmos. So that's right. Hey, let's uh, study some <laughs> astronomy. You know what I'm saying? He's putting on this like crackly ass record because he's Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's like, he's just old school as fuck. You remember? So when we first started our podcast, mm-hmm. we launched to the top of the charts and Neil deGrasse Tyson's producer reached out to me by email. Oh, that's right. For yeah, Star Talk. I was like, we'd yeah. love to have you on Star Talk. And I wrote back and I was like, oh my God, anytime, anytime, anytime. And they never responded. <laughs> and I remember I wrote back again. I'm like, guys, guys, they must have realized they're like, uh, yeah, he... It's not really that famous. They're like, uh, hey, you're, you're what's called the backup guest. Uh, we'll call you when Jennifer Lawrence drops out. Okay, oh, guy. Oh, J-Lo. Actually, that's way J-Lo. too high for you. Yeah, that's They'd way too high. They'd be like, we'll call you when Bill Nye can't make it. Oh, the science Actually, guy. Actually, still too high. Still too high. Let's keep going. They'll keep be going. like, uh, <laughs> Eric Topol. We'll call you when Tippi Hedren can't make it. Wait. Wow. Yeah, I went deep. You went really deep. That's we'll- like Henrietta Lacks deep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call you when MC Hammer's half brother is uh, feeling under the weather. That guy. <laughs> uh, speaking of beards, uh, I need to shave mine, but I can't until yeah. we shoot one seek. And for the podcast listeners, you can't see how scruffy and nasty this thing is. It's white. It's like it looks like basically a pupae, like someone shaved a bunch of pubes and mm-hmm. and made a a, a a toupee out of it mm-hmm. for my face. That's right. It's a pupae. I got. I have a science question for you. Science. Yeah. That, not, that was the science answer. <laughs> it's not about the pupae. It's not. Oh. Which is just a face merkin, really. A face merkin. Uh, yes. Okay. So check it. So when Amy Baxter was here the other day, she was talking about um, Doctor Amy Baxter. Doctor Amy Baxter, MD. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Uh, she was talking about magnesium for uh, you know things like uh, slip disc and bulging disc and all that kind of stuff. And so, okay, the other, I have a slip disc. My L5 S1 is out. And so I haven't been drinking coffee recently. And I started drinking, like, really strong coffee again every day for the last, like, three days. And then all of a sudden, like, my back has been feeling fine. And then my back just flared up like crazy. And my wife is like, you're probably mag deficient from this super strong coffee you've been drinking. And I was like, okay, I know nothing about anything. So maybe. And I took some mag. I feel better. Like half better. Okay. Le- le- wow. Yeah. There's a lot of just pure <laughs> weirdness there. All right. All right. So, so you got to tell me what's going on. I'm going to tell you. With I'm going to mag. T- Here we go. Yeah. Let me just get my brain on. Oh, my brain hurts, Tom <laughs> Heineberg. Okay. So, this is the thing. Mm-hmm. What Dr. Baxter, who is a pain expert, she was teaching us about neuromodulation uh, and, and, you know, afferent, efferent, C fibers and Pacinian right. corpuscles and all that shit. Then she got into magnesium as an anti-neuroinflammatory. So right. having enough magnesium may prevent a kind of neuroinflammation that can lead to worsening pain. And she cited some data about correlations of lower magnesium with higher pain scores and things like that. So the question is, you know, is there a causal connection between giving magnesium and, and improvement in pain? Mm-hmm. Now, what your wife is speculating, and she's a NICU nurse, and this is valid speculation, is 
by taking high dose caffeine after being off it for a while, you might have created a diuretic effect. In other words, mm -hmm. you started urinating more. Now, let me be very careful here. The data seems to show that people who drink coffee chronically do not have this diuretic effect. So in other words, people are like, oh, you drink coffee, it doesn't count towards your total fluids for the day because you're just peeing it all out. That's not true. If you're a chronic coffee drinker, you adapt and it counts, it's liquid. That's how I get a lot of my morning liquid. I get two nice fat cups of coffee. But you've been off coffee for a while, you get the coffee, you start peeing. Now diuretics, and this includes you know, artificial diuretics like Lasix and mm -hmm. the medi medication we use in the hospital, hydrochlorothiazide, these are also blood pressure medications. <clears throat> they can cause the loss of particular electrolytes. And potassium is one of them, that's the most common one. Magnesium might be another, in which case maybe you're wasting magnesium in your urine your magnesium dropped, you had a neuroinflammatory response and your pain got worse. Because the, S, the S1L5 disc that you're saying is uh, uh, prolapsed mm -hmm. is pushing on that nerve and it causes inflammation. Right. So anything that causes the inflammation to get worse, now they, some, some people say actually nicotine smoking actually makes those things worse as well in terms of back pain. But so maybe the magnesium then is, has an anti-inflammatory effect. So the simplest thing to do, magnesium is generally harmless in the doses you're gonna take orally if you don't have kidney failure. Right. Um, and actually she pointed out a really interesting correlation, which is it, uh, patients who were going in to have babies, they're not really patients, they're fucking human beings right. who are just having a baby. We yeah. turn them into patients because we medicalize everything in this yeah. country. So woman goes in to have a baby. If they need to slow uh, the delivery or stop the contractions like it's early, they give magnesium a lot of times. as something called tocolysis. Toco meaning the const const uh, constriction of the uterus to have a baby. Lysis meaning to break. Mm -hmm. And so they give these high doses of magnesium intravenously usually. And what they found is they had lower sort of uh, pain uh, response later on. And so the thought was, well, you know, maybe a lot of people are magnesium deficient. And if you give them magnesium, they do better from a pain standpoint. So back to your case, you took what, a supplement of magnesium? Yeah, like oral mag, you know, whatever it was. Got it. A couple of them. Because yeah. she was saying use mag citrate orally as this a supplement. This was a supplement that had two different types of mag in it. And it. I think one of them was mag citrate. Got it. Yeah. And you feel better. I do. A half better. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So, right. but but that's pretty good because it was like you know the people you what I was feeling last night is what people describe as throwing out their back like uh, it, that's what that it feels bad. like it's that was like last really night. bad and constricting yeah mm. and it just came out of nowhere which mm. was weird because I've been feeling fine before that um, and now it's like you know this the pain was like a six last night mm. and now it's like a solid three which wow. is totally fine like more manageable because you, you were know? saying that your back pain had gotten just yesterday you were telling me your back pain yeah had gotten better it had been fine yeah for like and, a long time and your thought was you were distracted by yeah. having a baby uh-huh right but you're also holding this baby and lifting and doing things right totally yeah so yeah. there's so many confounding factors well here's an interesting thing is like okay so it's become very trendy um along this line of thinking to say that we have a you know a hidden epidemic of inflammation and that inflammation is the cause of depression and anxiety and like you ever wake up and like it's like a tuesday and you just don't feel quite right that's inflammation okay like and so this is very true what's your like what are your thoughts on like is there a silent hidden epidemic of inflammation this i mean look people like to use scientific words unscientifically mm -hmm. and inflammation is simply uh, uh, b uh, the body's immune response. It's a it's a normal response that can happen abnormally. Mm. And uh, you need inflammation to fight disease. You need inflammation to heal. These are normal body processes. Mm. I think what, what we've started to see is, well, everything now triggers abnormal inflammation. So an autoimmune abnormal inflammation. Now, let, let's think about cases where this is actually true. So in order to get heart disease, uh, and let's talk about coronary heart disease. So you have a blood vessel, the lining of that blood vessel, the endothelium, in order to have a, a old school heart attack that gets filled with um, uh, uh, cholesterol laden plaque that then ruptures, re revealing the inside of the blood vessel wall. The reason that's important is the blood clotting cascade recognizes that uh, disintegrity of the wall and goes, ooh, that's a wound that needs to clot and then immediately starts to form this clotting cascade. Now, when that happens in the middle of a vessel, an artery feeding your heart muscle, 
it immediately blocks off, it can quickly block off that, ves that vessel and then starve that heart muscle for oxygen, in which case you have what they call a myocardial infarction, colloquially known as a heart attack. And depending on where it happens, how long it's happened, the nature of the heart, you can either survive or die. And anything in between, including having true failure of the heart muscle where you get heart failure long-term, arrhythmias, et cetera. So why would it happen? Well, cholesterol circulating in the blood was the leading theory for years and years that you have this LDL bad cholesterol and that bad cholesterol is um, going to lead to uh, uh, cloggage. And it made sense because when you look at autopsies of human beings, e even young people, they have a lot of this cloggage. It's like, you know, when your plumber comes and looks at the drain, he's a plumber. He's like, well, it's probably just a bunch of grease, mm -hmm. right? But the, but the interesting thing that, and I'm gonna pull up people's um, uh, comments as well while we're talking. The interesting thing about that situation is that wasn't, that's not enough to cause a heart attack. So you can have, you know, a uh, um, general uh, deposition of, of, of cholesterol and things like that. But in order to really cascade into, you know, what they call a, a, a heart attack, you need to have other things. And one of those things is inflammation. Mm. Inflammation means like there's actual immune cells, macrophages, that get into the blood vessel wall and they start eating some of this circulating cholesterol. So you have high cholesterol, there's some damage to the uh, blood vessel wall through um, inflammation. The inflammation then it escalates, those macrophages then start to sit there, cause a bigger plaque, and then make it inflamed and unstable. So if you have a very stable bunch of cholesterol sitting in your blood vessel, it's not gonna rupture, you're not gonna have a heart attack. You might have lower flow and get chest pain when you exert yourself, that's called angina, but it may not be something that kills you. If you have even a small bit of plaque, but it's unstable and it ruptures due to inflammation and a cascade of processes, that can kill you. So yes, inflammation matters. And the question is some of it's genetic, some of it is environmental. So smoking is gonna lead to greater inflammation and oxidized LDL particles that are more inflammatory when they sit in the, that's why you just shouldn't smoke if you have a history of heart disease. Let me clarify that, you just shouldn't smoke. Mm. Like it's just not a thing you should do anymore. Right. Um, I think you should mainline drugs, <laughs> possibly vape constantly. Uh, but I'm, I'm joking, by Listen, the way. Listen, you just threw a lot of science at me and since I don't understand it, I'm gonna take it as disrespect. <laughs> And so what I what I have come what after all that after what you just said uh, I, I basically just understood that inflammation is basically the cause of most of these things and I'm gonna hit the kombucha bar to reduce my inflammation. And you know what that do is, some yoga. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. You're not. Maybe a, I'm gonna hit Lululemon, you, buy some tight pants that cost three hundred dollars. Male camel toes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not under, maybe I'm gonna love myself more. The, you know, maybe you know? that is a prerequisite mm -hmm. for you, Tom Heinberg. That's not irrational though. So like these glutenophobes and others that like who yeah, shop maybe at I'm Whole, gonna go off gluten. Right, mm -hmm. who shop at Whole Foods. Because of the inflammation. They're taking what is a valid scientific concept and mm -hmm. they're putting it, you know, you remember in Spinal Tap? <laughs> <laughs> they had an album called Sex Farm. Mm -hmm. And he was interviewed. Know it well. Know, know it well. well. Sex farm know woman, well. I'm gonna mow you down. Sex <laughs> farm woman. And he was interviewed and saying, well, where did you come up? Why is this a thing? And he goes, well, we took the concept of sex <laughs> and we put it on a farm. And that's what I think a lot of the lay public does. They take a scientific concept and they apply it to their own life in some way that right. may not actually extrapolate. This is what Richard Feynman uh, used to call um, cargo cult engineering, which is there was uh, an island uh, somewhere full of, you know, native tribes people and the US military was dropping off um, cargo planes full of, you know, full of stuff for them. And so what they would do is they would watch the uh, cargo planes come in and you know the the guys would wave them in like this. And so what they did is after the US military had left and was no longer delivering packages, they built their own runway and they would have guys go like this. <laughs> circling and they were like that's how planes land here and bring us the stuff and that's so that's cargo cult engineering you know what's interesting is that that's not unrational in other words you can't blame them for that right that's what lay people are doing that's a perfect analogy actually it's cargo cult engineering mm -hmm. and and so this is what happens i think with a lot of the alternative medicine industrial complex is they take these big words like quantum inflammation neuroendocrine and then they just put them on the farm 
Yeah. So they go, you know, let's uh, apply it to, you know, depression. Depression is an inflammatory right. disease because you're eating too much gluten and it's giving you a case of leaky gut syndrome and that gut mind connection, three dots, ergo depression. And also, you know, uh, <laughs> you guys, medical doctors are terrible, terrible at creating narratives. You you never create narratives that can be sold by corporations, never. Because you know you, you talk to a medical doctor about something they're like, well, the data seems to suggest there's a 72 percent chance that inflammation is the root cause, and then there's also you know like a 28 percent chance it's not. So I don't know. And listen, you can't sell that. <laughs> you know, you know what, I mean? what? Okay, listen, <laughs> I do understand what you just said, but and I you, and I take it as disrespect. If you tell me, <laughs> if you tell me that acai berry tea is a superfood and that superfoods are great, I can sell that to the lay public, you know? And this is 100% true. This right. is why, you know, we had Paul Offit on the show and he was talking about how we are such bad communicators. And what's interesting is he is an introverted scientist. So if you just let him be himself, like in the early days when he was communicating about vaccines, he would mm -hmm. do exactly that. He'd go on to these shows and you'd have Jenny McCarthy over here and then you'd have Paul Offit. Now, first of all, just contrast in appearance. Who are you going to trust? You're going right. to humans trust the better looking person. This is true. Always. So no, he's already got a You're like she's fertile. Should follow her around. Exactly. <laughs> In my graphical user interface, that's a win. Paul Offit is a oh what why? And so he, and then he would say things like, well, uh, you know, the data seems to suggest that the hepatitis B vaccination is highly immunogenic, and that's a good thing for the. Uh, whereas what we ought to be saying is, look, dude. There are all these scary ass diseases that can murder your child. Yeah. Not only murder them, but murder them under torture. So like they're gonna go deaf, they're gonna be unable to reproduce themselves, you're never gonna have a baby, you're never gonna have grandkids because you fail to protect them through this act of love. And that's a different communication strategy than, uh, uh, yeah, the antigenic load of these uh, vaccines, this is a highly variable uh, flux capacitance, uh, you know, p-value less than 0 0.001. <laughs> So we have to get better. That's part of the reason we do this motherfucking show. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, that, that no one will share because I just said motherfucking. Because <laughs> I, I, by the way, okay, listen to me. People who don't like cursing can go fuck themselves. I agree. You know, mm -hmm. what's wrong with you? Like when, and again, this is just me on my, I, you don't have to agree with me. This is just a Zubin moment. I fucking like to curse. I do it in private. I do it in public. I do it on rounds. I never do it to a patient because I don't think it's it's a professional right. in that context. Context determines everything, Tom Heinenberg. We're well, a contextual creature. There have been studies that say that uh, people that like to curse are actually more intelligent than people that don't like to curse. Yes, and, and again, those studies are probably cherry-picked and flawed, but I don't care because I'm going to put my entire stock in that data. By the way, I went on Mensa's website, and I took their IQ test. Oh, dear Lord. And uh, this is <laughs> the result I got. It says... Your IQ lies outside the area that the test is able to measure. We are hoping to extend this area as soon as we've gathered more data. Remember that it is a good idea to blah, 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 It's blah. that low. No, it's, they're saying it's that high. That really? That it's outside the area that you're able to measure. And so what this made me think is like, Mensa is total bullshit. It's got to be horseshit. <laughs> because they're, they have membership fees, right? Because my, my IQ can be measured. I'm not outside any spectrum. Right, right. Every IQ can be measured. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so, like, I think they're just telling everybody who goes on this stupid Mensa website that they're geniuses and that they should be part of Mensa and then they pay the dues or whatever. Wait, wait, wait. So extrapolate that one step further. These motherfuckers are smart as hell. They're <laughs> yeah. the best marketers in the world. Yeah. They're really good at persuasion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes smart people know what they're talking about. And this... this uh, intuitively, every time I've ever met somebody who's like, well, I'm in Mensa, I'm like, well, yeah, shut uh -huh. the fuck up. Well, back at the Institute, <laughs> me and the boys. <laughs> fuck you and your hoe. It's like, yeah, okay, you're in Mensa, fine. You're a dipshit. I'm talking to you right now. Yeah, like. exactly. Yeah, whatever, Egbert. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, again, and again, we don't want to judge uh, the gifted because we had did a whole show on that, and many people in healthcare are, are on the gifted spectrum. Mm -hmm. But you can be gifted and still have some degree of social uh, intelligence. So back, back to the cursing piece, so I, I put something on YouTube podcast I did, and the first three comments were like, you know, <clears throat> the fact that you curse is disrespectful to Christians. 
and then a Muslim wrote in. The fact that you curse, I agree <laughs> with that Christian motherfucker. <laughs> that is disrespectful to Muslims. And I'm like, you know what? You two motherfuckers, I think I wrote in and then deleted it. I mean, you two motherfuckers are disrespectful to me because it's my religion to fucking say fuck all the time. So how is it that I have to respect your bullshit and you can't respect mine? Now, here's, the, okay, let, let's play a little bit devil's advocate because I'm a person who really likes to fucking swear too. Like, I swear all the time. I use fuck as a pause, like where I'm like, fucking, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, I do too. Right, right, so, okay. I love to, aren't, aren't we really, though, ultimately enabling and, and dumbing down discourse in society and then and then what happens when we're like five generations removed from this we go to the future and our great grand great great grandchildren are just like all right but first of all fucking look at this fucking guy fucking piece of shit am i right like i rest my case your honor <laughs> <laughs> and you're like damn this little bastard's a lawyer that's, that's impressive that's fucking amazing <laughs> i'm it's, we can only hope <laughs> By the way, I got to I got to address this comment from Liliana Cook, who's one of our supporters. All supporters calling out Z's attire. Why? Because last night on the supporter only show, mm -hmm. I wore this same shirt. That's now true. listen, you motherfuckers, and listen <laughs> carefully to me, okay? I consider clothes to be worn in 24-hour increments. I put this shirt on midday yesterday. <laughs> I did the show in the evening. It's fucking what nine ten o'clock right now. That's not yet 24 hours. I will go home after this, and I will change my goddamn shirt. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Emma, this are is, you with me? This is called cargo shirt engineering. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make it land that shit. <laughs> land it. Um, yeah, remember, see. remember in Ghostbusters when uh, she, she has the, he has the shirts on the floor, and he's like, that one's still good. I, I have a system. Uh, you know? <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's what all dudes are like <laughs> if left to our own devices. Every single one is like that. You know what's funny? This is a great story. My my wife uh, at the time was we were, you know we met young and we were like on again off again and all this stuff and so we were like off again for a while and she was like I want to meet up for coffee in like an hour let's meet and I was I was like 22 and I didn't have. I hadn't done laundry in like how no, who knows how long. I've just been drinking beer and like I smell like crap. And so I took a shower. I got myself all clean. I realized I don't have one clean shirt to go meet her in. So, <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to be 10 minutes late. I stopped at the Target next. I drove to Target shirtless. I stopped at the Target next door. I walked in shirtless. I bought a shirt. I put it on. I went to meet her. I acted like I had my life together when we met up. <laughs> you like, know what? At least you fucking tried. And it was one of these stupid shirts I'm from Target like you're wearing okay, right you now. shut the fuck up. <laughs> My wife bought me this shirt, and she goes, here, I bought you this shirt from Target. And I'm like, I love that shirt, except Tom Heineber already owns it. You know what's even better? Because his wife bought it for I him. think it was a Sriracha shirt. So I bought a hot sauce shirt, too, to wear to go meet her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? Okay, so here's a story for everybody. So Jonathan Bush, uh, the former CEO of Athena Health. They did our boy wrong. Yeah. Fuck those people. They did our boy wrong. They me too'd him and he wasn't mm -hmm. with his own wife. They were trying to give him only like $170 per share of uh -huh. stock. Uh -huh. Come on, that is not a golden parachute. How is our boy supposed to have five yachts? That's a molybdenum parachute. That's right. Okay, so Johnny Bush... <laughs> is a wonderful human being. He cares deeply about his fellow human beings. He cares deeply about healthcare. He invite so we go there to do a show with Athena Health to Boston. Me, you and Logan. You two are dressed like shit like you always are. Mm -hmm. 100%. 100%. 100%. Like Logan looks like 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 he looks like he has a diaper on. <laughs> and um <laughs> poor Logan. And uh and so we get invited, so we do the show in the morning at Athena Health. It's actually, uh, you can see it online. It's with um, uh, uh, Jessica Sweeney Plath talking about burnout. It's a great JSP. show. JSP, JSP, the JSP. That, so then uh, Johnny shows up and he's like, hey, what are you fools doing tonight? And I'm like, whatever you're doing, Jonathan Bush, we love you. <laughs> we're big fans. And he goes, well, we're, I'm having a party, so why don't you come? It's like a bunch of geneticists are showing up. And, and we're like, oh, shit. So we're like, okay, we'll do it. And all three of us look at each other like, I've got clothes because I've got to do shows so I can look spiffy. But these two assholes are like, well, shit, we can't show up at like, you know, he's a Bush. Like he's he's the brother of Billy Bush, the cousin of George W. and the nephew of George H.W. Bush. Like he's American royalty. This is true. Don't show up looking like an asshole. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We walk back from Athena and stop at Target. <laughs> where these two had flip-flops on. Logan buys a pair of $20 Target boat shoes. 
And we're like, oh, well, he's going to throw them away when they're done. He still wears those shoes this to formal true. events. <laughs> Buys a, a button up. What, what, what kind of shirt was it that you bought, Logan? It was like a button down shirt. Like an ox. So he basically, he, he had made himself look like he belonged at Kenny Bunkport because he was now wearing boat shoes and an Oxford shirt. <laughs> But they were Target brand. <laughs> but they were Target. Massimo boat. But nobody shoes. knew. That's called high low fashion. Yeah, where exactly. you, you know, yeah. And he's high low. And so, <laughs> and and I forget what you did, Tom. You had some. I had some stuff. You had something. Mm -hmm. I have these shirts from Mizzen and Maine that are like uh, they're That's they're right. dress shirts that are made of athletic material. Amazing. <laughs> So they feel soft and comfortable. It's speak, speaking of which, they're we're gonna, fake dress. We're gonna have Chris Lindland from Beta Brand on the show on Monday. He's gonna be talking about uh, athleisure and yo dress yoga pants. So, so if, you ladies, tell, tune in for that. Okay, so, so this is the great part. part the so we get an Uber to his house. We go to the wrong place. We're like, this this neighborhood looks broke as fuck. This can't be. <laughs> Because I got the address wrong. We finally get to his no, house. Wait, wait, wait. We, we met a very nice family, middle class family, That's who right. told us where to go. Okay. That's right. How dare you? We roll down the window and these Bostonians come out and they're like playing Frisbee in the yard. And I'm like, okay, nobody plays Frisbee in rich kids' yards. Okay. They're, they're inside playing video games. By the way, their house probably cost a million dollars, but it didn't cost $10 million, exactly, which, which exactly. is the one we were looking for. Exactly. You know? We were looking for the multi-million dollar <laughs> estate. So we end up at his place. We walk in. Jonathan Bush comes out dressed as what was he dressed as? He was as? wearing a gorilla suit. He was wearing a gorilla suit. <laughs> we look inside. There's a bunch of nerdy geneticists all dressed as fucking hot waitresses or a rabbit or the dude from Clockwork Orange with the crazy eye. And we look at each other and we realize this shit was a Halloween party. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's a costume party. I forgot to tell you guys. <laughs> and Logan's sitting there wearing his fancy boat shoes. And, and in a way, I thought the only person here of the three of us wearing a costume is Logan. Because this is not, <laughs> Logan would never be caught dead dressed like this. And then we, we suffered through the rest of the thing in our normal outfits. By the way, speaking of people who are full of shit, I had to listen to this woman at that party tell me about how she was going to fix greenhouse gas emissions with spider webs. <laughs> and I was like, no, you're not, bitch. That's never going to happen. <laughs> and she was like, actually, we have a grant, and uh, for, it's from MIT. And I was like, yeah, well, that's a bunch of bullshit. So, <laughs> Tom, You guys have to understand where Tom's coming from. He's desperately suspicious of liberal intelligentsia. <laughs> So we go to a party where it's just full of liberal intelligentsia, and he's like, okay, these motherfuckers don't know what they're talking about. This bitch, she works from MIT. What the fuck does she know? This motherfucker, he, what does he know? He's just fucking a scientist. <laughs> By the way, did you hear The Rock? So The Rock got quoted as saying, snowflakes need to shut the fuck up. Hell yeah, they yeah. do. And you know, I realized The Rock is 46, I'm 45. He's just a vastly more attractive, successful version of me. More mm. ripped, mm -hmm. everything better. Mm -hmm. Better actor. Bigger wang. Big. 70% bigger. Oh, Just, I mean, I'm extrapolating. 90. That much? 95. Really? Yeah. That much bigger? You know the rock is packing. I mean, come on. We all going to pretend like the rock's not packing? I mean, I wonder, though. Sometimes <laughs> big guys like that. <laughs> the, 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 people say this, though. Nurses they, weigh in They say this. this about Shaq. They're like, you know, it's actually small. It's like, it just looks small because he's so big. <laughs> it's probably bigger than normal. <laughs> oh, God. although I will say sometimes when the dude is that big, the wang is that big because they said, you know, you remember Patrick Ewing? Yeah. They used to say he had to tape it to his leg during well, games. That big. Oh, yeah. Dude. That big. Mm -hmm. Well, that maybe that's why women like taller men. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, all right, now, now that we're talking about wangs, I got to talk about mine. <laughs> I always I always the tell family my, show. I always ask my wife, I'm like, you know, you must you must have seen at least one. At least one that was just like huge, right? Like this big. And she's always like, no, nope, yours is the biggest one I've ever seen. I'm like, this is why I married you. But yes, I know exactly. you're lying. I know you're lying. You're a nurse. How many wangs have you seen? She's like thousands. I'm like, so you had to have seen one. Was there one that was like this big? Tell me about it. And she's like, nope, yours is the biggest one. <laughs> but she, but she takes I, care of NICU babies, dude. And I'm like, of course they're little listen, wangs. Listen, woman, we both know that my wang is within the statistical average, okay? You know, engineering language would say that you're within tolerances <laughs> for wangage. <laughs> wow. I just wanted her to tell me. I just uh, wanted her to uh, tell Alyssa me. Alyssa Keebler, a uh, uh, supporter of the show, says, love this show. <laughs> well, there's one. At least there's one. This is like the kind, like, it was like what Howard Stern used to do in the old days with like Baba Booey. <laughs> you know, whereas our audience is like 80% women. Yeah. They're probably just like, what the fuck happened to the show that we, you know, with this compassionate guy who talks about fixing healthcare? I'm like, but did I tell you about Tom's Wang? Because 
Uh, people Listen, are asking we still, about spider webs. We still really care about. Oh yeah. So the woman's plan was she was like, you know, basically we're gonna create like a like a silk screen in the atmosphere. It's gonna be made of spider webs, and uh, it, they're gonna be like synthetic spider webs because we've isolated the chemical, and we're gonna. And I was like, no, you're not. You're not gonna do shit. That's never gonna happen. You know, uh, could you imagine if that actually happened? And like you look up and it just says some pig. Yeah. Or uh, you know. <laughs> And you're like, oh shit, Charlotte's got a national platform now. <laughs> <laughs> this has gone off the rails, says Courtney Neal. Courtney Neal, you've gone off the rails. When was it ever on the rails? Well, yeah, well, it was not. You mm -hmm. see, what separates us from some other so called podcast <laughs> personalities is we do this shit live and take your comments. This is true. And we'll make fun of you. Mm -hmm. Let's make fun of someone here. Logan okay. Stewart is watching. Fuck you, Logan. You're your, your a diaper wearing <laughs> bitch. <laughs> your boat shoes are ugly, dog. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know they're not Sperry Topsiders. That's how we know. Penny loafers. Mm -hmm. uh, See me with the white privilege when Logan was was buying regular boat shoes. I was like, those aren't Sperry's, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Susan Robinson. I'm a liberal woman, and the Wang talk is making me laugh. Hashtag not a snowflake. See, you can be liberal. Mm -hmm. in a classical sense and not be a punk ass bitch. I, I consider myself one. Here's where I am on the political spectrum. Socially, I want everybody to do whatever they want, all right? You want a boyfriend? Anal. Great. You want right. a girlfriend? Great. great. You want to do some other shit? I don't know about. Great. Some weird stuff she haven't even heard about yet. Right. You know what I mean? Some new stuff on the new the cutting edge, uh, the dark web. Sexually. Yes. I want you to do that, okay? All right. Fiscally, I want you all <laughs> Stop spending my fucking goddamn money. This is my money. I work for it, and I'm not giving it to you, okay? I'm going to use every tax mitigation strategy possible to not give it to you because it's mine. Because what did you do? I'm you didn't play, do anything for my money. I'm going to play uh, Alexandria ocasio cortasio Sasian <laughs> for a second here. Okay. So, AOC. Yeah, ALC. Good, dude. I need to the brand myself AOC. like the ZDG or some <laughs> shit. Like, Zoc. I'm, Z, I'm the ZOC. Uh -huh. uh, so... All right, so Tom, you may feel this way about your money because you're not fabulously wealthy. Now, what happens when you're Bill Gates wealthy? Do you still feel the same way? Or would you be willing to give 70% of your marginal income up? Yes, but that's only to protect you. That's an insurance policy to protect yourself from the pitchforks. Ah. That is why there, there are super rich Democrats, mm -hmm. but they're dirty, filthy liars. <laughs> like, they don't believe what they're saying. They just don't want people to come for them because they know that most of the time they made their money in an ill-gotten way. Oh, come on, Tom mm -hmm. Heineber. Let's just say it. I think there are rich people who are so <laughs> rich that they're like, fuck it, like every extra million I make does nothing for me. So give it to raise the people at the bottom of the competence hierarchies to a level of sustenance that allows them to function and have meaningful lives. Well, okay, but that's like, um, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> Explain why the it's de stupid. Uh, the Democrats are the party of the super rich and the super poor. There are no people really in the upper middle who are Democrats. Just none. Because those people have to work for a living most of the time. You know what I mean? Ah, but the whole Bay Area is upper middle class. No, no. You're, if your house costs $3 million, you're not upper middle class. You're rich. You're upper class. Yeah, but in the Bay, you're poor. You're poor because yeah. you choose to live amongst all the other rich weirdos, right? <laughs> but, like, you're rich to normal people. If you go to Omaha, you can buy a freaking skyscraper for $3 million. You know what I mean? So Susan Robinson says, I work for the Gates Foundation on malaria vaccine research. Bill Gates is legit. Yeah, he's legit. Yeah. So have, have you heard, though, about, uh, so the answer- I, I want all, I'm a Republican, or I like, not really. I'm, I'm fiscally conservative. I want Bill Gates to have all of Bill Gates' money, and I want him to deploy it instead of the government deploying it, because he'll do a better job with it, mm. right? Except for when he gave those malaria nets to those people, and then they used them for fishing. That was- that was but actually that was a miss. Hey, that was a miss. Hey, everybody has misses. Give a man a fish, they right. become a little bitch. <laughs> give a man a malaria net, they learn to fish with it. And fuck you, Bill Gates. I'm just saying, where's the party of common sense? You know uh, I mean? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. No, it doesn't exist. Yeah, uh, we all have to pick one of these extremes. I say fuck it. You, so, I'm so, not picking. So did you hear, though? I didn't vote for Trump. I'll never vote for Trump, right? But I'm not voting for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez either, or whoever, whatever idiot oh, they no, put look up. Oh, no, look at the... Logan. Bread goes in, toast comes out, but where does the bread go? <laughs> <laughs> you know what the difference between socialism and capitalism is? Mm. In a capitalist society, bread lines up for you. You know what I mean? I go to the grocery store, there's just all this bread. I get to choose from it. I buy it, take it home. 
In a socialist society, you have to line up for bread. And that's mm. just not right. I don't wait on bread. I don't wait on anybody. It's an interesting chirality of lining up. Mm. I like that. It's, a, yeah. it's any antimers mm -hmm. to use the chemical terms. So Yeah, listen, that, you're throwing that, a lot of big words at me. And, and since you I don't take understand them, disrespect. Disrespect. Uh, disrespect. Uh, you know what else is disrespect? <laughs> what the anti-vaxxers did to Bill Gates. So apparently they started posting this fake article where they pulled up some doctor who said that, yeah, Bill Gates talks about vaccines all the time. But, you know, I know for a fact because I took care of him, uh, he didn't vaccinate his kids. He was like, ah, no, they don't need vaccines. They're perfectly healthy. And I'm like, that's a fucking bullshit lie. And if it wasn't, it means that Bill Gates was like 10 years younger and was a rich douchebag like many anti-vaxxers. And yeah. was just like, I know better than the scientists. And was like, they're fine and they're rich and they're protected. And then he came to his senses. Right. Uh, but I don't. I think it's all bullshit. But it's funny that article. It sounds like bullshit. But do we I know if it's, it's do we know if it's true or not? No, it was like on Health Nut News or some bullshit, right? Oh. So it's all bullshit. But it's funny because twenty people have sent it to me. Oh, can you respond to this? Right. I'm like it I was, just did. This bitch. Is like the, bullshit. It's like the same thing. Who's like? Uh, it's like those alien conspiracy guys. It's like mm. this guy was a colonel in the air force, and one night he was flying his plane. He saw some weird shit. He was a colonel. <laughs> And you're like, it's okay, an to authority. maybe he's fucking crazy, just like the rest of you. It's like, no, 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 no. Did you not hear the part where I said he was a colonel? Because he was a colonel. He was a colonel. Just and like the colonel who has 13 herbs and spices. This guy worked for the CIA. It's like, yeah, statistically, there's probably some crazy people that work for the CIA. <laughs> Um, Adeline T, who's a supporter, says the government is not properly incentivized to effectively harness and deploy resources. Right. They're yeah. not. Well, let's talk about the, the VA. Government sucks. Let's talk about the VA for a second. The government's been shut down now for what? How many days has it been, Logan? It's like 20 days. Day 20. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, <laughs> currently, everyone unaffected, Z. Except for the national parks are fucked up, though. Who gives a shit about that? <laughs> Yeah, look, at, Logan's going to go. He, so there was this article about... Uh, somebody no, all right, now, Somebody did tell me, they were like, oh, well, you know, actually the FDA shutdown could be could be rather worrying. And I was like, how about everybody just not go to Chipotle and you're fine? Can I, can I tell you? Yeah, I'll tell you right now. Avoid Chipotle. <laughs> avoid romaine lettuce. Actually, avoid any fucking vegetables because they're all poisonous. And they're gross. They're grody. They're gross. We all know that. No yeah. one wants to eat vegetables. <laughs> Do you see that? So Sanjay Gupta did a piece called uh, Why Everyone Hates Vegans. Yeah. And I was like... My boy finally figured it out. It's obvious. It's obvious. But, li okay, listen. The government's been shut down for 20 days now or whatever. Has it affected you in any way, shape, or form? Not at all. Yeah, zero. Yeah, the government I don't does, get a tax the government does nothing. I owe money. Exactly. Yeah. The government does nothing for any of us. Zero. I think you're uh, a little a trifle strident with that bit of crumpet, uh, mm -hmm. Heinebur. Uh, we have roads. Uh, we have laws. Everybody always does this with the roads. Well, it's like, do you know how much I've paid in taxes? Like, enough to use the roads for fucking ever. Okay? And I'm only 29. I've paid my road shares. Dude, roads cost like a million dollars a mile. A billion dollars a mile. Okay, my share. I've paid uh, it. I yeah. see your share. So it's been gonna, paid. You're going to... Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the people who are always talking about the fair share, it's like, my, you're, you got to pay your fair share, man. It's like, yeah, you're consuming more than you put into the system, so... Oh, there are plenty of... Uh, where's your fair share, person? Plenty of parasitic uh, uh, worms on the teat of the public good. But let's say this, though. And, and this game has been played by Peter Atia and others. They go yeah. to the prisons and you raise your hand, everyone who had a dad. Raise your hand, everyone who came from a... So there's a lot of other things. What are we supposed to do? Government issue dads? Yeah. The, forget, <laughs> forget, about the, forget about the solutions. We have no solutions. Right, there's no solutions. Let's, let's think about the nature of the problem. So it's not always personal choice, although choice can save us from a lot of our disadvantage. Uh, in other words, we may not have a choice in how we're born and where we're born and the you know, bias and discrimination, all that, but we do have a choice in how we handle it moving forward. Speaking of false quotes, there's a false quote that's attributed to Bill Gates where he said, if you're born in America, it's not your fault if you're born poor, but it is your fault if you if die poor. If you die poor. And I don't think that Bill Gates ever said that. It doesn't sound like something he <laughs> no, would ever say. No, it's not something he would say. No. He doesn't get political like that. No. Yeah, he's a different kind of cat because he's got too much autism. It's like it. Kublai yeah. Khan once said that everything you read on the internet is not always true, you know? Kublai Khan did say that, and <laughs> Attila the Hun actually uh, trolled him on that. That's true. Yeah. And was like, yeah, but you're a dumb bitch. Yeah, Kublai. also Socrates was like, Snapchat, that's my shit, dog. Dude, did I ever tell you my idea <laughs> of, um, of a science fiction novel where it's a future year there's no so in other words um there's no time travel but there's time social media so they've created a system where you can go back in time and ancient figures can connect with you via social media so socrates can tweet like until the hun can send you a facebook private message but you cannot actually travel physically 
Mm. And uh, it, it was called Time Tweet or something. I forget what it was. It was That's some... a stupid. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's right up there with uh, Devin Moore's idea. Um, what was it? Uh, Time Cop? No, it wasn't Time Cop. It was. <laughs> no, no, no. That was, was Jean Claude Van Damme. It, it was Attila the Hun and Jack Black as a New York cop. And was it Attila the Hun? I, oh, why am I? It's killing me now, right? Kung Fu Cop. No. They switch places. Yeah. Um, God damn it. Kung Fu Cop. No, it wasn't Kung Fu Cop. I don't know. Anyway. Ah, it's killing me. Anyways. Have I ever told you my genius idea that Hollywood needs to pick up on right now? What's that? Brewster's Billions. Oh, this again. The remake. Mm -hmm. Time Crime, says Sydney. Time Crime. Yeah. Brewster's Billions, starring Kevin Hart. That's a mil that's a that's because a of inflation. That's a yeah, exactly. Brewster's millions is now Brewster's mm -hmm. billions. So he has to spend a billion dollars. Yeah. And he does it. He's uh, gonna, by he's gonna get like thirty billion. Oh my god, dude, I know how he does it. So he wins the contest at the end by buying a hunt like a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and it all goes to zero. <laughs> all goes to zero. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom Heinberg is just like a like you're like that that Native American in the boat just with a single that, tear. That is a good ending. <laughs> That's a good ending. <laughs> That's how he does it. Yeah. Uh, you heard it here first, folks. Because <laughs> remember in the original, he buys like the stamp, like the million dollar, it's like a million dollar stamp or something. And then he, uh, he sends it. He like sends a letter with it, thus ruining the stamp. Oh, yeah, right. It was the upside down you, stamp. You can't own anything at the end of the That's 30 right. days. That's right. Yeah. So he mails it and it's not his anymore. By the way, I love the logic in that movie where it's just like... Uh, you know, when I was a kid, uh, my my dad caught me smoking cigars, and he made me smoke a whole box of cigars. So I hated cigars ever since, and I'm gonna make you hate hate spending money. And it's like, all right, this is this is a thin. Uh this is like, like well, so, excuse for this plot to exist, but I'm with it. Let's see. Bill Gates takes his money and like saves the world. You're just a bitch ass bitch. <laughs> By the way, I remember the name of the movie now. Yeah. So Jack Black in modern day New York has a there's a time war Freaky Friday situation with Genghis Khan. And the name of the movie, wait for it, Genghis Cop. Genghis Cop. So Genghis Khan comes into the future, becomes a cop in New York. Jack Black goes into the past, has to run the Huns. <laughs> Both of them learn a little bit of something called compassion. <laughs> All right? <laughs> this is like uh, the, the retarded version of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Kind of, yes. And by retarded, I actually meant to say retarded. Like slowed. I still use that word. Slowed. <laughs> That's because you didn't watch the episode I did with Holly uh, Tabor about why that word is offensive to people with children who have intellectual disabilities. I was actually in the room, Z, for that. <laughs> but you weren't. <laughs> you were virtually in the room. I was virtually in the room. I was room. in a trailer at Stanford. I was in her office. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you don't. See, that's why you get a pass. Mm -hmm. You can use the R word. Yeah. I well, because the dictionary definition of it means slow, so I'm going to keep using it. So you retarded the progress of yeah. Genghis Cop. Mm -hmm. Right. How do you, you like politically correct language? No, I don't. Yeah, you do. Because you always upgrade your vocabulary to well, be inclusive of politically correct language. True. I don't like to, I don't like to directly inflict harm when people ask me directly and they go, you know what? I, you have a right to say whatever you want and they do it in a respectful way. But the reason that word hurts me is X, Y, and Z. Then I go, okay, I won't use it. But if people are like, um, I'm going to call you out, D-Dog-MD, for being an asshole, intentional bitch right. and using this shit. And then I'm like, fuck you, fuck your hoe, fuck your mama, fuck everything about you. You little 20-year-old piece of shit, don't call me out on social media, Understand, thinking you can read my mind and what my intentions are. I'm doing X, you're seeing Y. You want to call me out to get social status with your stupid little bitch-ass punk friends in your little tribe Fuck you. In fact, I'm going to use it more. So the reason I reposted readmission, mm. because it's dope. Because it's dope as fuck. Mm -hmm. I put a lot of work into it. My, a lot of my brand is built around that kind of idea of like, we make dope parodies. And I believe in preventing readmissions. Some motherfucker messaged me privately and was like, you may want to delete <laughs> your fucking hard work. Let me tell you. Because of a docuseries that came out on Lifetime about how how R. Kelly is a piece of shit. Well, you're you're by by parodying him, you're problematic. Okay. You you know what you are? You're R. Kelly adjacent. Yeah, you're adjacent to R. Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I'll be honest, I was triggered. Mm -hmm. Because what I said was, How dare you tell me to delete my hard work because R. Kelly turned out to be a piece of fucking shit. Well, to be fair, we knew he was a piece of shit when we made it. That's kind of true. That's kind of true. <laughs> it's a dope song. It bangs. It right. bangs. It. Look, oh, so by using 
his backing track. I am some, this is what I was told on Twitter by some fucking OB resident, right. a male OB resident is like, shame on you Z dog for using rape to get views. And I was like, no, I use well, a dope ass track to get views. You know where this logic goes to. It's like, you know, uh, we must throw out democracy because the people that invented it were slave owners. Yeah, and right, so therefore right. it's all evil. That's right. where this logic goes right, to. Right, right, right. And it's like, no, 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 no. I take dope shit. We make it doper. That's right. That's what we do. I don't care who made it. The thing, the reason why the language thing is always, it's confusing to me because it's illogical. Okay. If the word before uh, retard was a word and that, you know, that was the medical term at the time, the medical terms before that were mongoloid idiot or physical moron. Yeah. It just gets right? worse the farther back you go. But yeah. if I said, if I called you a physical moron right now, oh, nobody would care. Come back. Yeah. Because it's not the R word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I used the Victorian term for retard on you and I was like, you're a physical moron, bro. Nobody, nobody would ha say anything about we it. We should start doing that. Because they don't care. Yeah, yeah. I'm totally mongoloid. Or you're a mongoloid Logan idiot. just called me yeah. the mongoloid. I'm nope, like, nobody would care. Yeah. Nobody would care. Except for Mongolians. Mm -hmm. Because they'd be like, uh, no, he's not. Okay. You know what? what? Cortez. Cortez. Oh, AOC would care. And it's Logan. like, okay, so like sometimes like you'll do it where you'll be like, you know, that's severely developmentally delayed. I do like that word. Right, because yeah. that's the new medical uh, nomenclature. But that one is actually what they're using on actual retarded kids, right? So by saying that, you're actually making fun of the retarded kid, are you not? I don't Do you see this? Know. Do you see how this retarded arms race works? This is... <laughs> This, it's retarded, all right, but it's not. It's not the way you think. Look, 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 look. Let's be totally honest. Yeah, I'm gonna play devil's advocate from the snowflake side of this. Words do matter because they carry a certain valence. Now, the thing is, if see, you, I actually think that we should all just be saying the N word well, all the time because then it would have no power. Well, you know what I mean, right? But think of the valence of that word. So the valence actually, because humans much of their cognition is revolving around language. They have a cultural component of it. There's a lot of momentum that goes into words. So the words matter in that sense. Now, but here's the thing. We should still have the right to say whatever fucking words we want. And then people can say, yes. you know, that word offends me. People do have the right to be offended. Oh, sure. But they don't have the right to fucking shut me up. No. And I have the right to say that I think if you're that offended, you need to look deep and go, why is it? Because right. is it my intent to be discriminatory towards X, Y, and Z people. So for example, I was told on Twitter by, which I ignored, by, because <laughs> fuck Twitter, it's fucking for stupid assholes. Uh, I was told on Twitter that I was endorsing the rape of young black women, not just, okay. By parroting R. By Kelly. By parroting R. Kelly. Yeah. Now, stupid. Now think about the cognitive distortions it takes to make a statement like that. Or the From, mental leaps you have to do to jump to, to jump to those conclusions. So, yeah. so it, it, here are the distortions. First of all, that everything's black and white, that you're either good or bad. So Z Dog is bad because he did this one thing. Mind reading, that you can understand what my intent is when I do something. Overgeneralizing, that by posting this one video, Z Dog is a rape apologist. Mm -hmm. um, there's a million cognitive distortions that any psychiatrist or psychologist would go, you know, if you're doing cognitive behavioral therapy, we would teach you to recognize that distortion and overcome it. Well, see, the thing is, according to Alexandra Hossasio Cortez, the AOC. Yeah, you don't have to be factually correct if you're morally right. She said that, didn't she? She did on 60 yeah, Minutes. She did yeah. say that. And I say bullshit. You have to be factually correct to be morally right. Well, it, <laughs> well. so this is where it's another cognitive distortion, I think, found on both sides of the political spectrum, which is um, it's us and them, good and bad, and any means necessary to vilify the other side is appropriate. So that means that if you, if your goal, and, and, and Height calls this playing a different game. So if your game is truth, if your game is in academics, if your game is finding truth, then you argue with people to try to distill what's the truth and you're willing to hear arguments against you and not vilify the other person because you're trying to get at what's truth. You're being, you can be dispersuaded of your own ideas, you can disconfirm your own ideas. If your game being played is to win an ideological battle, if as you know, Peterson says, you're ideologically possessed, then you will do whatever it takes to vilify the other side, right. you'll reframe the discussion, you'll set it in good and evil terms, and you'll say, well, you don't have to be right if you're morally correct, because you're trying to win. So AOC is right if she's trying to win this existential battle against the evil of the right. 
Right. Now, but think about that. Is that how we should be playing our games? No. 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 That's why I say fuck all y'all hoes. I mean, if children were doing that on the playground, you would tell them to stop it. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Maybe like if, if it was like, well, Johnny likes carrots and I like celery, so Johnny's evil. <laughs> right? You would be like, Johnny's not evil. He just likes celery. An evil vegetable. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 That really provides no benefit to humanity <laughs> beyond a mild bit of fiber. No vitamins, a lot of water. It actually may take more calories to burn celery than are actually in celery. Yes. In which case, if you did nothing but eat celery, you would uh, lose pound upon pound of weight and die eventually. All right, but uh, why are gorillas so beefy then? Huh. Think about it. Um, two words, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. And yes, that last word is one word <laughs> because, you know, it just follows, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, where are we? We're coming up on an hour. Let's read a couple comments here. Read some. Um Helen Holloway, sorry, Helen Holdaway. That's a great last name. Hmm. Um, keep up the good work, Z Dog MD. Common sense and plain speak is getting to be so rare these days. I want to unpack that comment actually. That you. By the way, don't use that word. <laughs> okay, fuck you, Tom Heinemann. I like the word unpack. Let me unpack that for you. I'm gonna unpack this concept for you, Tom. Let me Heinemann. unpack it for you. I'm By the way, I can, I can unpack that for you if you need me to. <laughs> See, me, you love PC. Language. Let me put a punctuation on that. <laughs> Tom, and back up and unpack it. The fact that someone has to compliment us on being on having common straight sense. talking common yeah. sense is a sick commentary on the nature of our country right now. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we're, I, I'm an optimist. I think we're actually moving towards progress. This is what The Rock said. Again, I'm going to quote The Rock. And I quote the late great Rock, who said, <laughs> Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who by Tom's estimation has a very large penis. It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be. Um, <laughs> he said... In the face of all this progress and all the freedoms that we have and all the people who fought for those freedoms, we have these children who are basically, it's their whole job to be offended constantly. And this is not a way to raise a generation of kids who are not anxious and not depressed and not neurotic. Now, it's again, if we didn't have people who were offended, we wouldn't have had the civil rights movement. We wouldn't have had women, uh, women's rights movement. We wouldn't have had the a lot of uh, the gay marriage that we have now, all those things that are wonderful, we would never have had if people hadn't been pissed, but they did it in a way that it was a common humanity identity politics, appealing to the majority and saying, aren't we all human beings who deserve rights? Shouldn't we be free to do these things? And what you're doing is not congruent with your own stated values, and that works. What doesn't work is common enemy, I mean, actually it works to polarize people, common enemy identity politics, where it's like, these people are evil. It's an, it's an existential battle between good and evil, and we have to fight it using any tools necessary. And if it means calling out Tom Heinenberg for saying the R word on the show when his intent was never to hurt anybody, then we're going to do that. Now, I think your intent is to hurt people because you're a horrible human being. You no, know? no. Yeah. I don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. No, that's actually that's quite true. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> you are a horrible human being, but I am fucking with you about your intent. And the thing is, how do I even know your intent? I have to look at your actions. And I think what people do is they look at one action and they make it, they cherry pick it, they confirm their bias based on what they see. Mm -hmm. That's true of politicians, that's true of everybody. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? AOC may have some great ideas. This is, this is why science uh, could never be a monarchy or it has never been a monarchy because you know, then you would just have one guy who we deem like to be the world's greatest scientist being like, I think it's this way. And yes, and even if that guy was really smart, he can't come to distributed consensus on anything right. by himself. Right, and he can't he can't disconfirm his own ideas because he's the final authority. People get this wrong also too that you know they, they think that scientists you know don't have biases and that they're like you know just all sitting in uh, you know brain in a jar types and like an ivory tower sitting around being like well I think the probability is two point one four three six nine seven eight ten you know that's We're not what it's like. Scientists are human; they have biases and they want to disprove each other's biases, and that's. How science works. That's how it has to work. Has to. It has to work. Yeah, well, way. anything that's not that is not science. Yeah. Right? I, th I think you're absolutely right. It's like when people are like, well, we have a study. It's like, okay, one study is not science. So, so, you know? so I think at the heart of this, to kind of wrap this all in one package, is free speech. So the ability to have open exchange of data among conscious agents. That's true. And in that open exchange, bad ideas can can proliferate but they will be seen ultimately and disconfirmed as bad ideas yeah no and everything is everything is speech really yeah 
Code is speech, money is speech, and Bitcoin is both code and money. You oh, know? here we go. <laughs> I knew there's like three levels before we got to Satoshi, Satoshi Nakamoto and Bitcoin. But, you know, actually, let me explain I'm just in one nutshell I'm, as we go. I'm going to explain Tom's obsession with Bitcoin. It actually relates to everything we've been talking about because Bitcoin is a proxy for free flow of information, for decentralization, for um, individual empowerment, but also a network emergent effect that is bigger than the sum of the individuals that make it up. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? You did. Yeah. I made it up just now. No, you're, you're right. That's why I'm so interested in Bitcoin. And I, I think a lot of people are interested in it for the exact same reason, because right. we're going to see this sort of pattern, this emergent phenomenon uh, of a new network consensus. We're going to see this continually reemerge as people rediscover new incentives mm. and new ways to do things. Yeah. Right? So it's not, Bitcoin is like the... Trojan horse, really. Right. It's a proxy yeah. of like what's happening in the larger world. But in order to get to that era of free flow of data and emergent truth, you need to have everybody firing in an open system. You cannot have censorship. And censorship right now is the is the call out culture where you right. can't even talk about say something like, you know, like what Amy Aberna uh, Amy, Amy um Baxter and I talked about on the show, gender differences. Right. Like the fact that, oh, women actually may think differently than men and whether and in some cases that's very advantageous in some cases it hurts them in society and we have to come up with ways to deal with that you got to remember too like me and you are in a privileged position because nobody can fire us from anything so that's right there there's no way to you can't destroy my livelihood and this, this is what these people do they go after you know this is how they've routed around free speech they've basically routed they've circumvented the first amendment by going after your economic livelihood yes right that's right and your so sponsor this or, is what yeah. cancel culture is like right. he's problematic we need him canceled blah right. blah blah and, and corporations happens. are scared so they just you know it's like kevin hart got yeah uh, did, taken off platform from right. the oscars he, which by the way was fucking bullshit look he's apologized like 30 times yeah and it's like and you can he's not like you have to look at intent like if reasonable people would agree that his intent was not to harm right. transgender or gay people right you know Right. Plus, he's fucking Kevin Hart. He's Kevin Hart. He's funny. Yeah. 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 He should have a comedian. Oscars. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, so they've they've circumvented around, and you know, this and this is another like I don't want to bring it back to Bitcoin, but I'll bring it back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin's free speech money, right? And it goes around, like you know, Mastercard and Visa are starting to say who is on the right side of what now. And if you've been labeled as an mm -hmm. extremist by like, let's say somebody like the Southern Poverty Law Center, right. they will, uh, you know. Deplatform you. Deplatform you, yeah. and then you can't get paid through their yeah. payment channels. Patreon, right? same thing. Exactly, Patreon. and it's like the Southern Poverty Law Center has done some good work in the past, but now they're sort of an extremist organization themselves. Yeah, I don't know much about that specifically, but I right. do know that this idea of using economic tools to shut people up is interesting. Now, if it's your own money, that makes sense. But this is really like yeah. When, vote with your own money, right? Vote with, vote your, own with your own money. Vote with course. your feet. If you don't right. like our show, don't don't listen. But to they're it. getting into the choke points of these centralized right. institutions, uh -huh. and they're corrupting them. And this is why decentralization is going to be the thing going forward because there are too many single points of failure. Trusted third parties are security holes, and we cannot have so many trusted third parties running the economy. Mm -hmm. You have to get in there and stop. The, you you have to take these choke points and decentralize them to widen the attack surface. Well, I, and right? then that makes the entire Otherwise, system. Otherwise, we can't have free speech. We can't have the First Amendment. We can't have democracy. That makes the entire system more anti-fragile. So you stress exactly. that system, it gets stronger. You stress a choke point where the banks control everything. Yeah. And it fails 2008. D too big to fail. Yeah. Too big to fail because they've never been tested. They've never been tested. Never. And they're centralized. All right. that money and power is centralized. And then what ends up happening? You you go out, you're the head of J.P. Morgan, and you tell your traders, just fucking, just, just trade, right? Yeah. Who cares what happens? Then they go out, they trade up all these crap, these junk mortgages, right? They they end up with too much on their balance sheets. They know they have to be bailed out by public by public funds. We end up paying their bonuses. They privatized all the gains and socialized all the losses in this entirely unjust system, right? Mm. How can we allow these institutions to continue to exist? Like everybody should be trying to destroy these institutions at every chance they get. And we used to call it crypto anarchy. Like that used to be the name for this. And now the name for it is just common sense. Like we can't let it happen. You apply, know? apply it to medicine. The big legacy players, the insurance companies, the pharma companies, the big health systems, they're the same motherfucking thing. It's centralized power. And when and when there's a stress to the system, 
they're going to fail. Exactly. And it's already happening. And you know what the stress of the system's going to be is every single doctor and nurse and pharmacist and you know OR tech is going to stand up one day and be like, fuck this. And what do people want to do? They want to further centralize by putting it all in the hands of government. Oh, that's the worst idea It's ever. the worst idea uh, possible. Having government control the uh, provision of healthcare is a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. Now, payment models are a different thing. How, who, what's the social covenant of who pays for healthcare? That's a different discussion. But having a like a VA yeah. nationally would be the end of medicine in this country because you would no longer, again, it's centralization when the trend in human progress is decentralization, emergent network effects from tons of innovation happening out in the field with some guidance in a system architecture that allows for the fact that not everybody has the, you know, is on that end of the Pareto distribution where they're just getting more and more successful. There are people who are very disadvantaged who need help. So again, I think everyone should be covered in this country, but the way we do that has to be very, very clear. And we'll talk about that in another show. Yeah. All right. Well, that was fucking, I don't know what that was, but I enjoyed it. Um, we'll read some final comments. Um, Rachel Casper says, Wade, pay attention. These two are brilliant. You see that? The supporters support us. That's right. This Wade guy probably nailed some criticism about us that everybody's in denial about it. I, I didn't, oh, no, Wade. Um, Wait, Wade Bickle. Oh, so he's an anti-vaxxer. Eh. He says, wow, you guys don't read, do you? Why do you support big pharma? Um, so stupid. Yeah, so he's just an idiot. Hey, uh, hey, Wade, you're fucking retarded. <laughs> I can say whatever I want on this show. Oh. I'm Bitcoin rich, y'all. Nobody can stop me. Nobody can deplatform me. Nobody can shut me down, Z. Nobody. I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. Amy, Amy uh, Baxter and I were talking about how since we're no longer employed by big health systems, fuck anyone who tries to shut us up. Fuck them right in the ass. And, oh, wait, and did we get? Did we just get radicalized? I think we did. Oh, I'm so angry right now. <laughs> <laughs> you see this beard? This is the beard of a radical. That's true. Because it's a little scraggly. Yeah. Probably incomplete. Listen, you're allowed to look like that, and there's nothing anybody could do about it. <laughs> Z-Pack, do me a favor. Become a supporter. We're going to get the CME starting really quick again for MDs, nurse practitioners, PAs and every type of nurse, because that's because we care about motherfuckers. Everybody else who I know in the comments is gonna be like, what about social workers? And what about <laughs> right. paramedics? Okay, what about you shut the fuck up until we get our shit together. Mm -hmm. We're doing this basically at, like it's costing money for us to do this right the now. The powers that be won't let us do it, y'all. That's a good excuse. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with that. Uh, and I love you guys, I really do. If you like this, hit share, and please go to iTunes, and rate and review the podcast. You know we're up to like 200, uh, sorry, 1,000 reviews now? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Hey, Wade, you should go give it one star. Fuck yeah, go you. give it Fuck one you star, Wade. you fucking piece of <laughs> shit. Fuck you. Fuck you. In fact, give us <laughs> give us one star a couple times. Make up a couple fake accounts. Every review helps us, even if it's one star. <laughs> what a piece of shit. Fuck that guy. All right. I love us. I hope you love us too. We out. <laughs>